Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This, uh, this video is in reference to uh, a post from our brother Ali Grays in Milwaukee. May Allah reward the brother and bless him abundantly, him and his family. I mean, he made a post in reference to uh, one of the leaders of the Naq Shabandi Tariqa, Sufi Tariqa, um, Hisham Kabani. I believe that was Hisham Kabani that was in the video. And I told him that I had a story that I wanted to share with him, but it was too much to type out. So I told him I'd make a video. Um, when I was in Singapore one year, and it was uh, Yom al Jumu'ah, and I decided to go to a different masjid than I normally go to for Jumu'ah. Um, so I caught the bus. I got there early. I was probably 30, 40 minutes early. So um, there were just a few people sort of malingering around and I was walking around. Now, I had on a white thobe white halensawa and a white imama which is not really the dress of the people over there uh southeast asians malaysians they have their own culture they have their own style of dress the way that they wear their clothing um normally it you know it's really only the students the tulabin who dress with a thobe on over there for the most part so anyway uh, I get there early and I decide, well, um, I'm going to just going to walk around because there were some shops and some things, you know, bookstores and things on the other side of the street. So I walk across the street and I'm walking and I'm looking in the shops and looking at, you know, whatever, you know, whatever was on the street. Just basically waiting for Jumwa to start. So I'm standing there. And then I, I notice this small Asian guy that's looking at me. You know, he's sort of standing back looking at me. So, you know, I peeped him and I kept doing what I was doing, moving up the street. I was moving further away from the masjid. And every time I turned around, I noticed he was relatively close and he was just standing there looking at me. So now I'm like, okay, what's what's going on with this guy? So as the time approached for Jumwa, I decide to start making my way back. And I notice that this guy is handing out flyers for something. As I'm walking past him, he stops me. He gives me salams. I return it. He 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 uh asked me where I was from, and you know, I told him. And he said, okay. And he said, I would like to invite you to an event. So I take the flyer and I look at it. And the first thing I see is a big green giant Sufi turban on this guy's head. I look at the picture. It was Nazim al Hikani, which is Hisham Kabani's sheikh. Again, these are Naqshabandi Sufis from the deviant sect, grave worshiping Sufis. And I've seen them do it. So no one can get on this video and say, no, they don't do that. I have seen them do it. So anyway, you know, I've traveled enough to know not to argue and debate, especially with people you don't know, because you don't know who's affiliated with the government or police or you don't know intentions. So, you know, I make it a point to keep it moving. So I, I made up an excuse for why I could not attend the event by uh, Nazim al Hikani, who is, who is now dead. May Allah give him what he deserves. I mean, and I think I told him something like I was going to Malaysia the next day or traveling or doing something. And he said, oh, okay, okay. Well, maybe next time. I said, yeah. So I hand him back the flyer. And then he, he didn't hold my hand, but he held onto the flyer and he said, you are Sufi, aren't you? 
I stopped and, and, and this was really an international lesson that I was about to be taught. This is an international lesson that I was about to be taught. He said, you are a Sufi, aren't you? I said, no, I'm Salafi. And as soon as I said the word Salafi, he started pointing in my face and yelling Wahhabi. Wahhabi, Wahhabi, you're a Wahhabi, Wahhabi, Wahhabi. He was just, I mean, it was loud. And you have to understand, Asians are reserved. Asians are quiet. Asians are, they don't like to call attention to themselves. This dude went buck nutty. He went from zero to 200. And he started screaming and pointing at me and calling me a Wahhabi. So I'm backing up. I'm like, okay, you know, and he's a little guy. I'm like, Am I going to have to fling this little dude across the street? You know, I was doing my best to just get away from him. And he's yelling and, and he's trying to debate and, and you know, just talking, just loud talking. By this time, the people for Jumu'ah started to congregate. They started to come. There were more people coming around. So people are now looking at this guy yelling at me. I'm looking for an exit screaming Wahhabi at the top of his lungs, pointing at me and calling me names. And, you know, I'm walking away. He's walking behind me, screaming and yelling and talking and trying to debate and, and, and saying stuff and something about Saudi Arabia and blah, 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 blah. I'm looking for an exit. I'm like, okay, I need to, because again, when you're in a foreign country, you can't just do what you would do if you were here in America. You can't just engage, you know, like you can here. So I'm moving kind of fast. I'm fast walking at this point. So I'm trying to get away from this guy. And I get to where you cross the street. And there was a big group of guys who were crossing. I blended in with them real quick. Like I dipped low. And blended in. And he lost me in the crowd. And the whole big crowd just went to the masjid and I just, you know, slid into the masjid, sat down up front as close as I could. And just, you know, I was keeping an eye out for him and I never saw the guy again. The lesson that I learned is that, number one, not everyone understands the term Salafi. There are all kinds of interpretations that people have misconceptions and they attach Salafis to all kinds of stuff that, you know, is not from a Salafia. So I learned not to use that term internationally. Alhamdulillah, I'm Muslim. I follow the Quran and the Sunnah, inshallah. Kitab and Sunnah, faqat, that's it. So when people ask internationally, that's what I tell them. Even in Egypt, how they under how they understand the term Salafi is different than how many of us here in the West understand this term Salafi. They attach it to almost anyone who wears a thobe. You know, certain certain Muslims, you know, who are well known overseas who are far from Salafi. They call them Salafi. You know, uh, in Singapore, they banned, what's his name? Uh, Z Nayak, Zakir, Zakir Nayak, that guy, the, the Indian guy who debates with the Bible. They call him Wahhabi. He's banned in Singapore. Like, he can't come to the country. They deem him to be Salafi, and they call him Wahhabi, and he's banned from the country. He can't come to Singapore. Now, anybody that knows Salafi knows eh, he's probably not, you know, claiming a Salafia himself. I've never heard him claim a Salafia, but I've definitely learned uh, internationally. I don't even say Salafi. I don't even say it because you never know who you're dealing with or how they're going to react or what you might have to do to somebody because they have, you know, a misconception or some kind of twisted understanding of what a Salafia is. But, um, you know, in the video that the brother Ali posted, it was a, a video. I think it was Hisham Kabani um, praying at a grave or something to that effect. So I told the brother that I would make this video to tell him about my run in with one of uh, 
Hisham Kabani's followers. And there's quite a few of them over there in Southeast Asia. It's a lot of them. It's a lot. It's a lot of Sufi, uh, a lot of Sufis over there. So from all different practices, it's a lot of them. So when you go overseas, you really got to know where to go, where to pray. You never know. <laughs> you never know where you might end up. So anyway, that's that. I just wanted to explain that story of my run in with uh, with the little Sufi guy in Singapore. So that's it. Barakallahu fikum. Jazakum Allahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.